Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons, and I want to do another video on Chapter 1 of Browns. And uh, I wanted to break out the information uh, in Chapter 1 on easements, put that in its own separate video, because they cover a lot of information on easements in Chapter 1 of the book. Um, I wish they would just cover easements in their own chapter. Maybe they'll do that in a future edition. There's whole books that have been written just about easements. But we're going to go over some basic, there's some basic things that surveyors need to know about easements. Okay, so we talked about in the last video, easements are the a specific right to use somebody else's land, land that you do not do not own. So in my video on the book of land, on land tenure, chapter one or two, I use the example of I might give somebody the right to drive over the south twenty feet of my parcel. That's an easement for access. Okay, so. They, in chapter one of Browns, talk a lot more about easements, so I'm going to just go through some of the points they make here. So, a positive easement gives the easement holder a right to do something with or on the land of another. A negative easement prevents the landowner from doing something with his own land. Okay, so you might get an easement that prevents the landowner from building a tall building that's going to block your sunlight. Okay, that's an easement that burdens his property, but it doesn't let you do something. It prevents the owner from doing something that's called a negative easement. Uh, the parcel of land that's burdened by an easement is called the servient estate. The parcel that's benefited by the easement is called the dominant estate. So you'll hear that. Those are legal terms that you'll hear. Servient estate and dominant estate. Okay? It just means that if one parcel is burdened by the easement and another parcel benefits from it. That's what that means. And a pertinent easement, that's another legal term you'll hear. A pertinent easement means that easement attaches to, to a particular parcel of land, not to a person. So there's there's two ways I can I can there's two types of easements. And a pertinent easement is when I give an easement to drive over the south ten feet of my parcel to the to the guy that lives next door and anybody that buys his parcel after him gets to benefit from that same easement because it attaches to the parcel not to my particular neighbor. Let's call him Dave. Okay, that's an appurtenant easement. An easement in gross is when I give that, that right just to Dave, and not to Dave's wife, and not to Dave's kids, and not to anybody that buys Dave's parcel. That's an easement in gross that attaches to a person. As a general rule, in our legal system, we assume an easement is easement in is an appurtenant easement, not an easement in gross. Easements are typically limited to the use described in the easement. So if you get a 10-foot access easement, uh, you can't plant walnut trees on it. That's not the right that you purchased. You purchased a right of access. An easement deed is a deed that creates or grants an easement and does not convey fee ownership. So we, we call those easement deeds. So they're not transferring ownership. They're transferring a right, an easement right. Um, I will also mention that a lot of times at the end of, of deeds transferring property, they'll throw in language that creates easements. And Browns talks about that as well. So those are deeds that create easements but also convey the fee ownership. Those are different. An easement deed doesn't convey fee ownership. I will mention too, I don't know if Brown talks about this, but easements can also be cre created by dedication on subdivision maps now in our modern society. So that's just something to keep in mind. An express easement is one that's directly created by a deed or on a survey map. So we call those express, that's where the party's intended to, to create the easement. Then there's a whole bunch of easements that are created by judges. Okay, so an express easement is created by the private parties. Uh, uh, what Browns calls a judicial easement, those are easements made by judges. Okay, and there's, there's several, types, several types. There's implied easements, easements by estoppel, and easements of necessity. Okay, so an implied easement is an easement that should have been created but was, was forgotten uh, by accident or mistake. So it was created by implication. So if I sell you a landlocked parcel and there's a driveway over my property to get to the, from the public road to that property, judges will say, hey, land admit to give you an easement over that driveway because nobody could benefit from a landlocked parcel. So that's an easement by implication. It was implied that land admit to do that even though he forgot. Easement by estoppel is where um, I'm basically prevented by the law from enforcing my rights against you as my neighbor because I said something or did something that, that made you think you had that right. So if I sell you a landlock parcel and tell you verbally that you have a right to drive over the, the driveway, um, 
I can't then tell you, no, you can't drive over the driveway because you don't have an easement. <laughs> so you're going to get an easement by estoppel. Okay? The, the court's going to stop me from asserting my rights because I made some commitments to you that I am now going to have to keep. And an easement by necessity is where a judge says, hey, uh, I need to create an easement here because it's really necessary for this land to have, had, to have any value or to, for somebody to have a reasonable use of the land. So it's called an easement by necessity. An easement by prescription, that's where you acquire, acquire an easement. It's unwritten rights. It's, it's when you acquire a right to use somebody else's land because you've been doing it openly and notoriously and for a certain period of time. Okay, So that's another, again, a judge has to decide that you have that. Easements can be abandoned through non-use or other actions by the easement holder. You can also do certain things as the owner of the parcel burdened by the easement that indicates that, that you are going to force abandonment of that easement. It's abandonment of an easement by prescription. So easements aren't always forever. They can be abandoned through certain actions of the owner or of the, of the owner of the burden parcel. I will tell you that in law, I think in, in practice, the law makes it very hard to do that. It can be done, but it's, it's hard to do. All right, that was a lot about easements. Hopefully you guys covered all that. Uh, easements are a very complicated part of the law. Like I said, there's whole books on easements. I have one. Um, I wish I could grab it for you guys. Let me see if I can get it. So this is a book by Donald A. Wilson. I think he, he also helps write Browns and the book on Lampton. Um, so this book, uh, Easements Relating to Land Surveys and Title Examinations, and uh, it's all about easements. So um, there's a lot to learn there about easements if you're a land surveyor. So I encourage you to pick that book up as well. All right, guys, appreciate you watching the videos, and I look forward to diving into Brown's Chapter 2 with you guys.